you know, I interviewed a guy named Irko who mixed the Kanye record that just right. came out. And he he was saying, it's like, you know, I could never specialize until I moved to L.A. Uh, you know, like, you right, because be in it's one of the over big oversaturation. So every every little nook and cranny has their own thing. And I I you know, yeah, Chicago might have a more diverse scene than Jerusalem. I don't know. Um but even Chicago, I, I would, I would, I would imagine maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe, but even here, like the money making shit here is rap and it's, uh, post-production like commercials and stuff. The rest of it mm. is, uh, it's a grab bag, you know, of like, are you going to get something that's going to pay the bills or not? And for me, like, you know, I do do post-production work, but like, yeah, I, and I enjoy it so to speak, but like, I, I don't enjoy it enough to like, you know, to turn down other gigs for those type of gigs so it's you know i completely understand and you kind of just have to like sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and take one of those gigs and you know sometimes you don't but you know i i definitely understand what you're talking about not being in an yeah. a market city yeah totally but you know we have the internet so yeah right here's, exactly. here's to hoping <laughs> yeah exactly awesome so so let's uh let's let people uh, listen to what we've been talking about. You sure. sent me a track called Fall by Alex Chadwick yeah. uh, for the Saw segment. So, yeah, let's have a listen to that for about 90 seconds and we can cool. chat Sounds about what went, what went into it. Awesome. love it cool uh, man really I'm glad it's it, it's kind of like uh death cab for cutie ish yeah but like a little different it has another another thing element that i'm i'm it's on like the tip of my tongue of like what that artist is but i, I i'm not quite there yeah i love the bass tone especially at the beginning when it's kind of all by itself yeah. and it's just Thanks, like up, up front uh guitars are dope yeah tell me a little bit about what went into that song um so a decent amount actually went into that song um it was recorded very well uh which was awesome but like the drums, for instance, uh, that was a stereo track that I was given. No shit. Yep. So what I ended up actually doing, what you're hearing is not a stereo track. Uh, what I ended up actually doing was going through the whole performance uh, with a, a plugin or program called Massey DRT to detect drums. And what I literally did was I found the one or two spots where there'd be a lone bass drum and a lone snare drum you know, basically sample that so that it knew what to detect. And I went through and went through all of the drums like four times and basically detected sample accurate, all of the kicks, snares, and toms. And then once I had those triggers, I kind of knew the vibe that he was going for, or I guess I guessed with the best of them. But um, I found the the samples that I thought would really add the vibe to that stereo track. And then what I did was I basically kind of blended them in and did the samples in such a way that, you know, they were round robin, so you can't really tell, and kind of made those drums hit a lot harder because they were hitting hard before, but it just, it wasn't the same. And I was able to get the balance and the kind of grit and everything that I wanted from it. The bass tone was great. It was, uh, I believe, just a DI. So uh, what ended up happening with that was... I think I threw it through an SVT 
plug in alliance ampeg profile it's one of my go-tos yep Love it's great yeah. and then mm-hmm. you know sculpting a way to get to where we wanted to be um there was just something for me that song was really carried by the kick snare and bass along with the vocals like that bass part is really yeah, really yeah, good yeah. Um, not that the guitar mm-hmm. parts and the other stuff isn't, but that like it had the meat, it had the character that I was looking for. So I tried to focus the, you know, the low end and the mid range on those characters and really tried to get the most vibe that I could out of those two characters. And then kind of filled in the vocals, uh, didn't do too much. The vocals, the, the biggest thing, you know, was, uh, he recorded the banjo and the vocals at the same time. So it took me a little bit of time, but I was able through RXing uh, to get the banjo completely out of, not completely, but 97% out of the vocal mic so that I could, you know, give it a little bit of tuning and, you know, be able to process it a little bit better. And everything else was kind of, I mean, everything else was just kind of lightly touched and there was a lot of automation and you know, just you know, running, running through some stuff, but it was a, it was a good song and it was, you know, decently well-performed. I don't think I, I can't remember if I had to actually quantize anything or, you know, chop it up and like semi quantize things, uh, to get tighter feel. Um, I honestly, I don't have the session in front of me, so I don't remember. Um, but I don't believe on that song I had to, I think I might have actually done it for the vocals. That's something I've been into lately is, really mm-hmm. uh pocketing vocals um yeah uh and i something i never really it's something i paid attention to but i've definitely been way more hyper focused on not like 100 percent quantizing things but like getting them closer to the ballpark so they hit you know a lot harder do you do that with like melodyne or just chopping it up so i've had success with melodyne honestly the thing that i've had the most success with is beat detective so usually even really guitar, yep with guitar parts drums like anything i'll use beat detective and just mm-hmm. set the parameters correctly to get what i want if the material is a little bit too complex uh for either melodyne or beat detective i will literally go in and do it by hand uh with like uh pro tools is nudging like, oh, well yeah well no i'll do it with elastic audio and basically just get everything to where it Mm. needs to be in a very transparent uh, algorithm. And then usually what I'll do is I'll then send it to the client to make sure, not tell them what I did, but basically just kind of send it and be like, hey, are you cool with this? And, you know, nine times out of ten, they're like, yeah, this sounds great. So I roll with it. For instance, the the song that I sent you that was the uh, Ose Shalom, the world mix, um, I actually had to quantize the entire band by hand. Like that whole, whole thing has, was done by hand. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it's, you know, it just had to be done. The The performers were top notch studio performers, but unfortunately the way it was sent to everyone, cause it was all done remote, they were all playing to just random things and kind of random performances. So they like were in time with themselves and kind of with the track, but not a hundred percent. And so when I, you know, when I got it, you know, when I did crazy. Yep. But the end result, I mean, you can't tell it sounds, you know, fucking amazing. And when I sent it back to the artist and was like, let's listen to that. Okay. Let's do it. (laughs) Let's listen to it. Uh, Let's just plug it in. We're, we're in it. Let's do it. it. Let's let's, we're in it to win it. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.
I would. That's awesome. I, I would have no idea. Yeah, uh, that, that it was all chopped up. Um, but it needed to be elast- done. Like elastic audioed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, Sounds every, great. It needed to be done because the and the artist I think knew it. But when the song was not mixed, and you know, you didn't have everything uncovered, basically in a spotlit. It wasn't as noticeable. Right. And their first reaction was like, you know, I, I don't think people will notice it. And I said, you know, I think when you hear this mix, it's going to be pretty clear. And so I was like, you know, let me do some of the work on this. And if you don't like it, fine, I'll revert it back like no issues at all. But, you know, let me see what I can do and see what you think. And, you know, I did it, sent it to the artist and she was just like, holy shit, like, this is great. <laughs> like, this is exactly what I wanted. And so it's just, you know, sometimes you got to do that shit and it makes you know yeah. the going going difference. the extra mile mhm yeah 100% how long did that take you to do that to that painstaking labor i would say it probably took me about 4 hours when it was all said and yeah, done good for you man good for you yeah. that's that's that seems uh that seems pretty fast yeah i mean yeah i i have my my tricks to that in you know once you kind of get in the flow and get used to it you can kind of move pretty fast that's like a full afternoon session yeah yeah exactly but you know again it it made a world of difference it was night and day it really was yeah no i i totally hear that because like sometimes when you're doing the mix bef- you know before you do the mix everything's kind of a little bit more muffled and then when you you know in the mixing process a lot of it is just kind of like making sure that everything is poking through in the right spot and then all the, the definition you know comes through kind of like you were saying yeah yeah by the way that on the artist is beth reinstein and uh it's called Ose shalom and yeah. uh it's fun to have two Jews talking about Jewish music I on, know, right? on the pod, so <laughs> give, a, give a shout out to the tribe. Um, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so great work. I'm, I'm impressed you. that you were able to go that that extra mile. I don't know if I would have been able to have done that. <laughs> well, you know, it's yeah. just one of those things. I, I think I was I think I was honestly just as surprised as maybe she was, maybe not, at how well it turned out. Because I'll be honest, like... I was, uh, it was a mix that I had, um, a new intern with me at the time who was watching me do it. And I like during that first initial mix session, I had tried beat detective. I had tried Melodyne. I had tried all the things and it just was coming out like shit. Like it just wasn't quantizing stuff properly and things were just messing up. And I was just like, fuck this. It'll just be messy. And that's what it'll be. And then, you know, the next day when I woke up and I was like, you know what? I need to just do this by hand. and I was just like, you know, because I just can't like, you know, Beth is a, is a friend. So it's just kind of like, I can't like, I can't like knowing in good conscience that there is a way to potentially, you know, solve this issue. I can't just not solve the issue. Like I need to spend the time and get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats. Thank good you. Good job, man. Thank you. Awesome. There's a couple more topics I want to discuss. Do it. Before, but rapid it, fire. we're getting a little bit long in the tooth, <laughs> but uh, okay. Rapid fire. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask you about monitoring because I, I we had a whole schmooze about this a while ago. Since then, I ended up getting the monitors you probably wouldn't have recommended me to get, but I've been really happy. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, I mean you're 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 using barefoot, but you're using like with the the the, L, the NS10 like setting. Uh, tell me about yes. that. So I I use the uh, the second generation of MM27 barefoots. I love them. They have that little meme or meme kind of technology that allows you to do a hi-fi system, the normal flat barefoot sound, uh, quote unquote NS10 style sound, which I own a pair of NS10s and it's not quite the same, but it's close enough. And like a cube style, like Oratone speaker, uh, Mm. computer speaker thing. And um, one of the things that I've really started getting in the habit is, is once I kind of set my low end, I will go straight to NS10 mode. And the reason why is mostly because it makes me really focus on the mid-range. And, you know, at the end of the day, if I get the mid-range right, then there's a lot less work you need to do in the low end and even in the high end. So, you know, the low end and high end kind of sort themselves out if you can get 